Welcome to iLector Online. Now we're finally ready to tackle case number three, the underdamped case. Again, we're talking about the source-free RCL circuit, but in this case, the resistor is so small that R over 2L quantity squared is smaller than 1 over LC. In other words, the damping factor is smaller than the natural frequency of the circuit. What that means is that if we try to solve the differential equation representing the voltages around the circuit right here, we end up with the two solutions to the characteristic equation, which end up with a radical where the contents of the radical is less than zero. The determinant is negative, and I shouldn't call it the determinant. This is called the discriminant is negative. In other words, the quantity underneath the radical is negative. And so, what that means is we can rewrite the solution to the characteristic equation as being the square root of the negative of this quantity. Now, this will always be positive, so we're forcing what's underneath the radical as being negative. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this by the natural frequency squared and this by the damping factor squared. And so you can see then that what's underneath the radical is simply the negative of the difference between the natural frequency squared and the, the um, damping factor squared. And then if we make a substitution, we can then substitute the square root of the negative of this by the plus or minus, of course you have a plus or minus here, the j omega d. j of course means that we have a radical that has a negative in it, so therefore we have the imaginary number. And omega sub d is now defined as, right here, the square root of omega sub naught squared minus alpha squared. In other words, the natural frequency squared minus the discriminant squared. Not the discriminant squared. The natural frequency squared minus the damping factor squared. And that is called the damped natural frequency. And notice that the damped natural frequency is always going to be less than the omega sub naught. Because the omega sub naught is the natural frequency when there's no resistor in the circuit. This is the frequency of oscillation of the current when there is a resistor in the circuit, which means that the frequency of this damping curve of the current is going to be smaller. In other words, this is going to be spread out more. The frequency is going to be slower than the natural frequency if there was no damping factor at all. So now we realize that we can write the solution for the current in the same format as we did before. A1 times e to the minus S1t plus A2 e to the minus S2t. S1 and S2 again are the solutions to this equation right here. And so therefore what we do is we then plug in what the, uh, what the exponents are. So minus S1 can be written as this, and minus S2 can be written as this. Notice we pulled out the negative, and we have this as a negative, and this as a positive. If you work through the algebra, you can see that those are actually correct. In other words, we can now write the current as a function of time. We can factor out e to the minus alpha t, which is this portion right here on both equations. And then we have a1 times e to the j omega dt, and, e, and then a2 times e to the minus j omega dt. So what we have now there is we have two solutions or two terms to our solution which involve the complex number j. So then we have to realize that there's a connection. We remember or we should remember that e to the j theta can be written as cosine of theta plus j sine theta and e to the minus j theta can be written as a cosine of theta minus j sine theta. So here we have the positive j omega t and there we have the minus j omega t so that we realize that we can then expand those as the sum of the cosine plus j times the sine and the difference, the cosine minus j times the sine. So what we've done is we replaced the e to the positive j omega t by this and e to the negative j omega t by this. So now what you can see is we have this solution of the differential equation in the case where we have a damped an underdamped system where the oscillations continue slowly diminishing over time and then we can write that in terms of cosine and sine. So then what we do here is we can see that we can take a1 cosine plus a2 cosine, write as a single term, and a1 sine minus a2 sine as another term. 
Remember, we still have the J in there, and then finally we make a final substitution where A1 plus A2 can be written as B1, and A1 minus A2 times J can be written as B2. So B2 contains that complex number J, can't forget about that, but now at least you can see that our solution can now be written as I is a function of time, the current is a function of time, is equal to E to the minus alpha T, which is that exponential decay curve right here, the dashed line, and then we multiply the times B1 times a cosine of omega D plus B2 times a sine of omega D. With other words, we have the oscillation diminishing over time as the resistor in the circuit pulls energy out of the system. And that would then be a good way to represent the final solution. Remember, the cosine and the sine represent the two possible solutions. B1 contains only a natural number. B2 only contains a complex number or will contain a complex number. But this is a good way to write the solution of case 3 when we have an underdamped case. And that is how it's done.